I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to the book of Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. If you don't have a Bible with you, that is perfectly fine. Just grab one of the pews, looks just like this. Turn to page 1199 and you will find Romans chapter 6. Also, just in keeping with our uh, gift theme of the day, if you need a Bible, you want to read God's Word and you don't have a Bible, then uh, feel free to take one of those. It's our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word. Let it be part of your life. We know it will change your life as you read it. Hey, it is five days until Christmas. Are you guys ready? Yeah, some of you are. Some of you are panicking. Uh, and since it's five days till Christmas, that means it's four days till Christmas Eve. And I just want to mention that we're going to have four Christmas Eve services uh, starting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, on Thursday. And these are some of my favorite services of the year. If you're going to be in town, then you'll want to be here. You'll want to bring your family, your friends with you and celebrate Christmas. It's mostly music, a little bit of preaching. Uh, so that should make it appealing for a lot of you. But... Uh, uh, I just, it's just a great service. Love for you to come and share with us in that. So how many of you still have shopping to do? Okay, a lot of hands go up. A lot of you are like me, kind of waiting to the last minute. Because we got to go get the presents, right? You got to buy the presents, and then you got to wrap the presents. You got to ship the presents if they're not here. So that on Friday we can open the presents. That's right. How many of you like getting gifts? Okay, every service, there's people who don't raise their hands. Like like you're really, if someone comes up to you with a gift, you're going to go, no, I don't want it. Get that thing out of here. You know, I like getting gifts. And by the way, just let me say thank you on behalf of myself and the church staff for the way that many of you bless us this holiday season. Individuals and life groups, you guys are kind of like a blessing and a curse. Because most of what you give us is edible. (laughs) That's right. And so you bless us and you curse our waistlines. Uh, So uh, that's okay. We we love it. We walk through the office and it's like, oh, look, calories. I think I'll just have some. And uh, and since you guys make delicious things, uh, we eat them. But uh, but thank you for your generosity because we like getting gifts. How many of you like giving gifts? Yeah, always more hands go up then. Isn't it fun to give the, the perfect gift? You know, to, to make uh, somebody just like so excited they squeal or shout or do something weird. I mean, it's easy when they're little, right? When you have kids at home or grandkids and, and they want something so bad and there's that, that mystery of Christmas. But last year, we did it with our oldest daughter who was 24. Now, I confess, I say we did it. The gift was from me and Meralda, but I didn't even know it was in the box. Uh, so... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm assuming most of the guys in here are like me. Christmas is a mystery for you, uh, even if the present's from you. It's like, oh, what did we give them? Uh, doubles the excitement. So I'm thankful for my wife and, and how good she is at this. But we gave our, our daughter Amber uh, a ninja blender, and she squealed and hugged the box. It's awesome. So today, obviously, we're talking about Christmas gifts. And I want us to consider the best gift ever. The gift is eternal life. The gift is eternal life. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. If you're not familiar with this verse, you need to mark it. You need to memorize it. You need to let it be part of your life. It communicates a wonderful, wonderful truth. Here's what the Apostle Paul says at the end of this great chapter. He says, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus. You see, Christmas is the celebration of Jesus invading our world in order to rescue us from hell. That's what he did, because the wages of sin is death. So every one of us, because of our rebellion, because of our selfishness, because of our sin uh, in terms of wanting to do life our way instead of God's way, had resulted in us deserving hell. And, And yet, because God loved us, he sent Jesus into this world to pay the price for our sin. He became the sacrifice for you and for me so that we didn't have to go to hell. That's, why, that's what he did in his death. That's what he 
declared in his resurrection. That's why we celebrate communion today. Because we want to recognize the gift that Jesus gave us. So the gift is eternal life. Now, my question that I, that I want to ask you today, and I really hope will resonate throughout the, your holiday celebrations, is this. What will you do with the gift? What will you do with the gift of eternal life? So while you celebrate Christmas this year, as you're shopping for the presents, as you're wrapping the gifts, as you're shipping the gifts, and especially as you're opening the gifts, I want that question just to kind of be there. What am I doing with the gift that God gave me of eternal life? Um, I'd like to suggest three actions that I pray that you will take with this gift. The first one is I pray that you will open the gift. Open the gift. You know, in a few days, the gift gluttony will commence. And some of you will tear through the, the paper on the gifts like it's nothing, right? Like your Edward Scissorhands going to town. You're just going to shred it, and it's going to be done because you want to get into that package. Anyone of you like that? Any shredders in here? Yeah, you're, you're like hanging your head in shame. Don't be ashamed. It's okay. On the other end of the spectrum, we have those who are reliving the Great Depression because they're carefully opening <laughs> the packages like they don't want to tear the paper because they're going to reuse it for another 10 years. And, and everyone around them is going, would you just get into the packages? Open it. Right? Any of you glacial package openers in here? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter, because here's what's going to happen. You're going to open all the gifts that are given to you, right? Is anyone planning on leaving one of your gifts that's given to you unopened? Like, hey, I'm just going to save it for April. <laughs> no, you're going to open it. Gospel of John, chapter 1, the apostle writes, But to all who did receive him, Jesus, to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. To everyone who received him. Simply put, God has given us the gift of eternal life. Have you received the gift? Have you opened it? Because you can't earn the gift. You don't get it by going to church or doing good deeds or being a good person or being a good citizen. We receive the gift of eternal life by believing that Jesus is the one and only Son of God, Savior of the world. Believing that he died on the cross to pay for our sins and was raised from the dead, and we make a personal commitment to follow Jesus with our life. That's when the gift is opened in our life, and it becomes real for us. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but will have eternal life. So have you experienced a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ? You see, have you received and opened that gift that God gave in Jesus? I pray the answer is yes, but, but if you're not sure or if you know that you haven't, then please, today, don't leave without talking to someone about how you can make that commitment to Jesus. After the service, pastors will be in this room over here to my left. Stop by there. Let them explain it to you. Members of our prayer team will be here at the front. They would be glad to share with you how Christ changed their life and how he can change your life as well. It really begins when you decide you're going to follow Jesus. So today, have you opened the gift? I pray the answer is yes. And if it's yes, then I'm going to encourage you to use the gift. Use the gift. Uh, Gospel of John, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus wants us to use his gift every single day. Now, this is important because some of us have received useless gifts. Anyone with me? You ever got a useless gift? You know, you open it up and you try with the best you can to kind of communicate, oh, yay, but inside you're going, oh, what? Really? This? And... and uh, I just got to tell you, I've gotten lots of useless gifts. Most of them have been from my wife. <laughs> hey, she was here last night. She approved this message. So, uh, <laughs> you see, here, here was the problem. I love I to play golf. 
uh, and she loves to give gifts, and so she would go find these cute golf gadgets. Absolutely worthless on the course, but, you know, she wanted me to hang them on my golf bag, and she wanted me to carry them around, and, do th- and, and I'm just like, they're worth, you know, I was like, oh, yay, you know, and I wouldn't put them on my golf bag, and she'd come out and look at my golf bag, she'd go, where is the useless thing I gave you? She didn't say that. She would name it, and i go, I don't know, I don't care, I don't use, and finally I just said, hey, please don't give me useless golf gadgets, I, I, don't, I don't value them, they're not important to me, I know you love to give them, but let's just agree on that, and so she stopped doing that, which is a wonderful thing, but along the way, she also gave me some incredibly useful golf things. For instance, um, I'm, I'm a cold weather wimp. Okay, I mean, I don't know about you guys, I live in Havasu for a reason, I like it hot, but I like to play golf year-round, and it gets Havasu cold in the wintertime, and so she found these golf gloves that are like real gloves on one side and golf gloves on the other side, and I just call them my sissy gloves, because when it's cold, like last Thursday, I had them on, and I'm wearing them, I'm like, my hands are staying warm, and I'm praising God for a wonderful wife who gives me useful gifts. The gift of eternal life is for everyday use. It is not for special occasions like weddings and funerals and when grandma comes to visit. And guess what? It's not just for that one day when we face death. I know some of you, you say, hey, I trusted Jesus. I got eternal life. I'm going to hang my hat on that. And I'm going to cash in on one day. One day when when I die, and yes, the gift is valid on that day. That gift is going to kick in on that day, and we're all holding on to that hope that we get new bodies, and we get eternal life, and we're going to live forever in heaven, and and that's a reality. That's part of the promise, but it's the gift is more than that. The gift of eternal life is for right now in your everyday life. Moment by moment, Jesus wants you to live abundantly. See, God wants us to live every day in forgiveness. In forgiveness. Do you realize that all of your sins have been forgiven through Jesus Christ? 1 John chapter 1 says, With the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all our sin. That means that you are forgiven for everything you ever did, for everything you're doing right now, and everything you're going to screw up in the future. That, that's what forgiveness means. You're forgiven for all your sins. And what that means is we don't have to live in guilt and shame anymore. You don't have to drag that burden of feeling guilty everywhere with you because you are forgiven. By the way, our God is not a God of guilt. You see, the Holy Spirit who is in you, he convicts you of sin. And then when you repent of that sin and you turn away from it and you ask God to change your life, then he doesn't remind you about that sin anymore. He, he's the one who gets you ready for redemption that's going to come out of your repentance. Now, it's Satan is the one who wants to keep reminding us of our failures of the past over and over and over again. But forgiveness means that you don't have to live apologizing endlessly for past mistakes. But instead, you live anticipating God's power to redeem. And God does that so that we can live in love. Every single day, we can live in love. Get this, you are loved by God. That, that, that's, that's amazing stuff. It, you are valued by God, and he wants you to know that. You are so valued by God, so loved by God, that he was willing to sacrifice his own son for you. And he wants us to live in the awareness of that love and to love others. Right? That's why the great commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. God wants us to live every single day a life filled with love. So are you living with the awareness that God believes that you are worth rescuing? That God believes you're worth adopting into his family? That God believes you're worth blessing? Because if you live in that awareness, it's life-changing. And when we're aware that we're forgiven and that we're loved, it allows us to live in joy. You know, Christmas is a season of joy, isn't it? (laughs) That's funny. Everybody's sitting there. Santa hats and everything. Just real quiet. Yeah. (laughs) Season of joy. Not saying a word. 
Christmas is, is a season of joy, at least in my house. I don't know about your guys, but it, but it is. Unless, of course, you're broken, grieving, you just experienced loss, maybe you're depressed and hurting, then it's painful. Uh, but even then, Scripture challenges us to rejoice always. Always. How do we do that when, when life is painful, when life is broken, when life is frustrating? By living with the knowledge that we win. That whatever condition you are in currently, whether you are celebrating and life is a success or whether you are grieving and broken and hurting, whatever condition you're in, it's temporary. Because the promise of God is it's going to get better. It's going to get better. This is just for a little while. The best is yet to come. And so we win. And, and Christmas is the story that reminds us of all that. It's the story of God coming to be with us for a little while so that we could be with him for eternity. It's the story that God is for us so it doesn't really matter what's against us. It's the reminder that God is redeeming our broken lives so that we can rejoice because it only gets better. You see, if you belong to Jesus, you're on the winning team. And it's impossible to lose. And so God wants us every single day to live with that knowledge of forgiveness and the reality of love and rejoicing in his goodness and grace. If you've opened the gift, I pray you are using the gift. And then we want you to share the gift. Share the gift. Uh, in Acts 20, 35, you don't have to read this whole verse, but it quotes Jesus as simply saying, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. You guys believe that? Yeah, yeah okay. So we all agree it's better to give than to receive. Uh, so are we sharing the gift? Sharing the gift. Now, this is the point in most sermons where I would kind of get on the soapbox and tell you guys that I want you to invite your friends to church and tell them about Jesus. And I do. And I do. In fact, I was just uh, reading an article that said that Christmas time is the season when the unchurched are more likely to go to church than any other time of the year. Did I mention we have Christmas Eve services on Thursday? The same article said, and, and I don't know if this is true, I was hoping you guys would test it out, it said 60% of the unchurched would go to church if a friend invited them. So I'm um, just saying, test out the theory, see if those statistics are good, let me know. Uh, but I want you to share the gift. But even more than, than going and telling the unchurched, I want you to share the gift with your family, with the people that are closest to you in your life. And here's why. Uh, you can come to church, and you can put on a smile, and you can pretend everything's okay. And you can go out into the community, and you can put on a smile, and you can invite people to church, and everything's okay. But if you go home and don't live the gospel, all the rest of it's just fake. You see, Jesus came to change our lives, to give us this gift of eternal life, and he really wants that to happen first and foremost in our families in our homes, so that then it'll overflow into the church and into the community. But it's got to start where we live, and so I want you to share the gift with your family this Christmas. And I know that this is Christmas week, and so it's going to be a family-intensive time over the next couple of weeks, right? And some of you are like, yay, and some of you are like, yay, <laughs> right? Because some of you are about to get invaded by relatives, and some of you are going to go and invade relatives. And you're praying that they upgraded their spare bedroom bed, right? <laughs> or that they got one so you don't have to be on the floor. But in any case, it's going to be an intensive time with family. And, and that, let's just be honest, that's where our faith gets real. When we're at close quarters with each other more time than we're used to, and, and our schedules are weird and stuff's going on, it's a perfect time to live out our faith. It's also a difficult time. So I'm going to pray that you would bless your family and those closest to you this Christmas by forgiving them. By forgiving them. After all, the gift of eternal life means that we live in forgiveness 
And if we've been forgiven by Christ, we're to forgive them. Now, right now, some of you are dreading some of your relatives coming and hanging out with you because you've got stuff in the past, hurts, that, that come up every year at Christmas. Old things that, that you know, happened 20, 30 years ago. And, and maybe it's time for you and God to kind of work that out and you to forgive them and not hold that against them. Some of you aren't even getting with your relatives because the relationship has been so broken that you don't get together anymore. So maybe this year, God wants to do a work of reconciliation through you, and he wants you to reach out and just say, hey, uh, we haven't been close, uh, but I just want to ask you to forgive me, and, and let's, let's actually communicate that we love each other again. Do you think God might show up in that kind of act of faith? in that kind of forgiveness. So forgive them. Um, and, and decide in advance that you're going to forgive them for all the little snarky comments and annoying behaviors and rude things that are done over the holidays. Just decide you're going to go ahead and say, hey, you know what? That's going to just bounce off of me. It's going to go away because I'm going to live out grace to my family like never before this Christmas. Bless them with forgiveness. And then bless your family and those close to you by serving them. Serving them. Do you realize that serving is love in action? That we can talk all we want about how we love people, but if you don't serve them, they'll never know it. And, and love looks like this. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. A lot of you know this. Paul says love is, what's the first one? Patient. Patient. And love is, yeah, just stop right there, those two. What if this Christmas you were actually patient and kind with your family? How would that change the dynamic if, if you decided in your household you're just going to be patient and kind toward everyone, whether they deserve it or not? And you're going to look for ways to bless others instead of demanding to be blessed. And you're going to look for ways to serve others instead of demanding to be served. And, and you're going to look for ways to encourage and to bless others. You see, that's love in action. And it'll change the dynamic and, and, and honor those closest to you, even if you don't want to, maybe especially if you don't want to. You know, you got that annoying uncle, that cousin that just gets under your skin, maybe a brother or sister that just drives you nuts. Look for some way to serve them, to bless them, to honor them and see what God does. So I pray that you bless your family and friends by forgiving them, serving them and enjoying them, enjoying them. Look, just decide today. You're not going to be a grouch or a grump or a grinch for Christmas. Okay, you're not going to be the guy that's, you know, complaining about everything. You're not going to be the one who's critiquing everything. You're just going to simply thank God for your gifts, including your family. In fact, start praying for your families that's going to be getting together. By name, ask God to help you to have a great attitude toward them and ask God to bless them through you. You see, if you do that, you'll be amazed at the blessings that you receive. Just amazed at the blessings that you receive. So what are you going to do with God's gift of eternal life? What are you going to do with it? He's provided it through Jesus Christ. Have you opened the gift of eternal life? Have you received Jesus? Are you using it every single day or is it just set aside for special occasions? And are you willing to share it with everyone, but especially with those closest to you? I invite you to pray with me. Father, this morning, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you for your gifts that you have given to us, but especially for the gift of eternal life. And how we are not the same because of it. And Lord, this morning we want to pause to simply say thanks. To celebrate your goodness and your grace. And to ask that you would work through us today, this holiday season, and for the rest of the coming year. Father, we are yours and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.